Okay, so we're going to look at uh, similar polygons in this video. Uh, again, this video is going to be uploaded to my YouTube channel. However, it is focused for the daughter of, of friends of mine, uh, Caitlin. So, uh, Caitlin, I'm speaking to you again. And But uh, anyone else that's watching this, I hope you get some benefit looking at similar polygons. In a previous video, <clears throat> we had looked at ratios and proportions, uh, just kind of like generically, ratios and proportions. So if you need some help with ratios and proportions, what do we mean by that? please go back and watch that video on ratios and proportions. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna extend that concept into similar polygons, okay? And I'm using this textbook at the, at the right here. It's from McGraw-Hill, so they get credit for writing the book, but we're going to look at what do we mean by similar polygons. Um, really, this should make a lot more sense today in 2022 than it did when I was growing up um, a number of years ago. but you know, now if I were to draw a triangle that looks like this, we have this triangle. If I, and, I, and I, the reason I say it makes more sense is I'm thinking about a pinch screen. You can't see my fingers. I'm thinking about my iPhone, right? Where I go and I, I zoom in and I zoom out. This triangle, as I zoom in or zoom out, is changing size. It's not changing shape, okay? Similarly, if I were to draw a quadrilateral that looks like this. As I zoom in, the size changes. You can see the flaws in my drawing a lot closer, but the shape doesn't change. The proportionality of the sides remains constant as I zoom in and as I zoom out. And that's kind of what we're talking about here. Okay. Look at this uh, example here, the key concept, right? You've got quadrilateral A, B, C, D, and W, X, Y, Z, and we tell you that angle A and angle W are the same size, the same angle. That's what the single arc means. Angle B, it's got two arcs. Angle X has two arcs. Those two angles are the same. By telling me that the four angles in quadrilateral A, B, C, D are equal to the four angles in quadrilateral W, X, Y, Z, indicates that those two quadrilaterals, while they may not be the same size, they are the same shape, which means that the ratio of AB to WX, so 15 over 5 is equal to 12 over 4, is equal to 21 over 7, is equal to 18 over 6. The ratio is 3 to 1. So the quadrilateral ABCD is 3 times, the dimensions of the sides are 3 times excuse me, the length of the sides in W, X, Y, Z. Okay, so let's look at some examples here. Example one, we're going to skip that. We'll go to the next page. Okay, so we, <coughs> excuse me, we'll look at triangle A, B, C, triangle X, Y, Z. Those triangles are similar. There's a scale factor of six to three. A, B is six, X, Y is three. 6 over 3, that's a ratio of 6 to 3. The scale factor is the ratio, 6 to 3 or 2. If I look at it in the other direction, the scale factor would be 1 half. In other words, the sides in triangle ABC are twice as long as the sides in triangles XYZ. Conversely, the sides in triangle XYZ are half as long as they are in ABC. Okay. So, and I'm going to do some drawing here. Example three here, when we're going to look at, I'll try to draw that picture as good as I can. Not a good artist. We have two quadrilaterals. A, C, D, F. W, V, Z, Y. Okay. Now we're told, well, let's put some more in here. AF, this side is 12. We don't know the length of side DF. CD is nine. YW is six. YZ is 10. And VZ is three Y minus one. We are told that A, C, D, F is similar to V, W, Y, and Z. That means that angle A corresponds to angle V. Angle C corresponds to angle W. 
angle D corresponds to angle Y, and angle F corresponds to angle Z. Now, I'm using colors rather than one line, two lines, three lines, four lines, but it works the same way, okay? So what I know then is that the sides are proportional, okay? So if you look at side AC here, we go from red to blue, <clears throat> AC corresponds to VW, and that proportion is equal to CD, blue to green, over WY, also blue to green, okay? Um, and I wrote 6 there as opposed to WY. And I can go all the way around my parallelogram here. DF, the ratio of DF compares to YZ. And FA, right from purple to red, ZV. And so those proportions should all be the same. Okay. So it says, <clears throat> find X. The directions here in A are to find X. So we want to find this value of X. Well, in these sides here, X is the length of segment DF. That corresponds to YZ. YZ is 10. So X over 10. Do I have any other proportions? AF or FA is 12. Oh, do we know ZV? ZV, I'm not sure how helpful that's going to be. That's 3Y minus 1. Also notice that CD here is equal to 9. And from blue to green, blue to green, that represents WY. And so that would be six, okay? Um, I don't know anything about this proportion or this ratio here because AC, we don't know it. VW, we don't know it. But we do know that the ratio of CD to WY is nine to six. That simplifies to three to two. So my scale factor here is three to two. So what I can say then is that the ratio of x over 10 here is equal to the ratio of 9 over 6, which we've already said is the same as 3 over 2. Okay, and so now what I'm going to do is cross multiply it like we did before. So remember, Caitlin, I'm assuming you already watched the ratio proportion video. x times 2 is 2x, 3 times 10 is 30, so 2x equals 30, or x equals 15. So this side here is 15. If I want to find ZV, if I want to find the length of that side, I'm going to need to find Y. Okay, well, I'm going to use 9 over 6, or 3 over 2 is equal to the ratio of 12 over 3 my 3Y minus 1. So 12 over 3Y minus 1 equals the 9 over 6. But remember, we've already reduced that three halves. Okay, and I'm going to cross multiply 12 times 2 and 3y minus 1, or 3 minus 1 is 1 times 3. So 3y minus 1 times 3 is equal to 12 times, whoops, 12 times 2. 9y minus 3 is equal to 24. When I add that 3, I'm going to come up here. I have 9y equals 27, dividing by 9, y will equal 3. So that's not the length of side zv. y is 3. If I want the length of this side, I need to do 3 times y minus 1, and I would get 8. So the length of that side is 8. And what you'll notice is 12 over 8 is 3 to 2. 5 over 10 is 3 to 2. That scale factor will remain constant. So there's an application of ratios and proportions into polygons. And I'm, I'm going to say that as we go through more pages of this book, we're going to find 
interesting things, but they're all going to play out, okay? So the difference here in example four is that instead of having a quadrilateral, is I have a pentagon, okay? We're told the scale factor is four to three, okay? So the ratio of all the sides, let me get this a little more clear here. So the ratio of all the sides will be four to three. CD is four, RS is three, and I can use that to find all of the sides. Let's see if we can find a better example here. Okay. Each pair of polygons is similar. Find the value of X. So let's do number five at the top. Okay. So we have, whoops, let's make that black. Quadrilateral, C, D, F, H, and we have a little bit bigger one. That's S, T, V, W, okay? We're told that C is congruent to S, D is congruent to angle T, F is congruent to V, and H is congruent to W. Now you'll notice C and F only have one arc through them, as do the S and the V. That means that not only is C equal to angle S, but angle F, C, S, and V. Those are all equal to each other. Okay? Kind of interesting. Not sure how relevant that'll come out to be, but we'll see. So we're told that DF is 4, HF is 3. TV is 8, WV is X. Well, since these quadrilaterals are similar to each other, we know that the ratio of X over 3 will equal the ratio of 8 over 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2 over 1, so X over 3 is 2 over 1. There's a scale factor. This larger quadrilateral is not just larger than the smaller one, but STVW is twice. The dimensions, each side is twice the size of the smaller one. X times one is X, three times two is six, X equals six. That wasn't horrible, okay? Number six, same page right up here, we have quadrilateral. Oh, that's pretty ugly. Let me try that again. Because it looks a little bit more rectangular, but I'm not sure. We have A, C, F, H, where A, C is 8. C, F is X. H, F is 12. So clearly it's not rectangular. A, H is 20. We have the smaller quadrilateral. S, V, W, Z. Those sides are 2, 4, 3, and 5. Okay, find the value of X. Okay, now I kind of like to find my scale factor, right? These are similar, so 8 over 2 is 4. 20 over 5 is 4. 12 over 3 is 4. My scale factor is 4 to 1. The sides in triangle A, C, F, H are 4 times the length of the sides in S, V, W, Z. So that tells me that X over 4 is equal to 4, or X equals 16, because the sides in triangle A, or I'm sorry, triangle, in quadrilateral ACFH are four times the length of the sides in SVWZ. Okay. So let's find some application problems. Actually, yeah. So we can get into some really some ex some exciting things here, and I'm going to. Look at problem number 23. Okay. And again, I'm not, my goal here is not to do every problem, but to give a sampling of problems that hopefully uh, you'll be able to jump off and be able to do the rest. Okay.
So suppose we have triangle A, B, C, where A, B is 5, A, C is 7, and B, C is 6. And we have a little triangle here, D, E, F. We're told here that the two triangles are similar. We're told that triangle A, B, C is similar to triangle D, E, F. And my ordering here is important. This means that angle A and angle D are equal to each other because they're listed in the same order. B and, C, B and E then would be equal to each other and C and F would also be equal to each other. Okay. In D, E, and F, we're told that side D, E is 3. Okay. Now it says to find the perimeter of each triangle. Okay. So triangle A, B, C, the perimeter of triangle A, B, C, that's easy because, that's a C, is 5 plus 7 plus 6. And so that's simply going to be 18. But in triangle D, E, and F, we need to know side D, F, and side E, F. I'm just going to call them X and Y. Okay. Well, the triangles are similar. Therefore, A, B over D, E is 5 thirds, and that equals 7 over X. Okay. So 5 times x is 5x, 7 times 3 is 21, x equals 21 over 5. Now again, Caitlin, I'm talking to you. I like leaving that 21 over 5. You need to check with your math teacher. Any one of you listening to this, check with your instructor what they would want. They may be okay with you calling that 4.2. Okay, I'll go both ways here. Okay, so then uh, EF... Well, again, 5 over 3 is the scale factor, and that's going to equal 6 over y. So 5 times y is 3 times 6. So y is 18 fifths, or 3.6. Okay. So again, check with your teacher, check with your instructor how they want you to do it. The perimeter then... of triangle D, E, F, I need to learn how to write in human, is going to be 3 plus X, which is 4.2, plus Y, which is 3.6, and so we're going to get 10.8. So that's the answer in decimal. If I'm thinking fraction, that's 3 plus 21 fifths plus 18 fifths. And so that's going to be 3 is 15 fifths plus 21 fifths plus 18 fifths is going to be 15 fifths plus 21 fifths plus 18 fifths is 54 fifths. So again, make sure you confirm with your teacher, your instructor, whether they want the decimal or the fraction. Okay. So. As far as similar polygons go, that's pretty much what you're going to see throughout. Okay. Just making sure here we've covered our problems. Okay. All right. So there we go. Similar polygons. It's the same thing. Ratio.